Hey guys, Rory is here. Welcome to the Beginner's Guide. <laughs> I've been meaning to play this for the channel for a little while now. It's very much like Awkward Dimensions Redux like we played before, except it's like slightly more coherent. It's got a, like a, an overarching theme or narrative. Let's get straight into it. I have played this before, by the way. Hi there. Thank you very much for playing the Beginner's Guide. I've also put the My name is captions Reed. on. I wrote The Stanley Parable. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. Yeah. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff, and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And mm. uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible mm. floating crates around the level. And of course, yeah. it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. Mm. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Yeah. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made until suddenly one day he just stopped. Mm. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Is because I find his games powerful and interesting and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. Okay, so, as you will have seen... Okay, I'm gonna pause for a second. This is something you need to know about this game. It's very narration heavy. I've avoided playing Stanley Parable for a long time. I mean, I, I wanna play Stanley Parable on the channel. But I haven't played it for a very long time because I know that it's very narrator heavy. And narrator heavy games are difficult to comment, you know, to add your own two cents to. <laughs> because you're fighting for time with the narrator to, to make your make your points. That's something that makes Awkward Redux Awkward Dimensions Redux, sorry, uh, so very different, is that it has very little narration comparatively. So there's it's got the same sort of abstractness that this game has but it gives you the space that you can comment on it and make your own uh, remarks. That being said, this game, in my opinion, is a freaking masterpiece. <laughs> so I don't care. I'm going to probably be silent for most of this playthrough. Uh, I hope you enjoy the narrator, because I think he's great. I don't honestly know if it is the sa as actually the voice of the guy who made Stanley Parable, but I do know that the story... Oh, I don't want to spoil anything. If you haven't played this game, I'd recommend watching my playthrough or playing it for yourself because uh, it's very interesting. This is going to become a, like a secondary series on the channel, I think. Let's go. One. 
Yeah. <laughs> this game is called Escape yeah. from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Yeah. It's very much like a bad shooter game. Okay, it's, it's blocked that way. Oh god. Uh, yeah, so it's got a very basic machine gun. You run out of ammo, you can't reload. He'll talk all about this <laughs> in just a minute. It's very much just like a Security corridor. It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. But ultimately we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Enemy force neutralized. Beginning. So yeah, I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. <laughs> and you can see like the walls of the other rooms. The bare walls. Yeah, so this... None of the projects that we see are actually, like, Apparently properly Apparently the complete. space station has a labyrinth on it. I... Uh, sure, I don't know. That There's reminds really me of no that reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. Yeah. <laughs> There's no... This isn't like the Stanley Parable, though. If I go back into the, into the, you know, labyrinth, it's not gonna unlock special dialogue. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. Alyssa, the game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering the whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... Your body could stop the beam. Hmm. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? Yeah. It asks the player to <laughs> kill themselves. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Yeah, so this is this is basically what the premise of this game is. He's constantly adapts the levels so that you can see more of them. So you can see <laughs> I'm ascending again. <laughs> Just like the other day. The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. Mm. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking. But what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. Unfortunately, you don't get to see the loading screens between the levels. Uh, maybe I'll try and pause it every time the level starts just to show you, because it shows you the dates and, and what the uh, chapter is called. Hmm. You're like, uh, can't move, what the hell? But then... Yep. In this game, you can only walk backwards. <laughs> the past was behind her. So you're gonna go like... Eh. Chick. Oh god. <laughs> so it's a short oh, and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. When she stops and looks, it becomes clearer. Gotta walk all the way up to- oh. But if the future is always behind her... How will she find the strength? Strength for what? 
<laughs> to confront it. <laughs> it's a short little thought, it says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than mm. that. Which to me is why it works, because it gets out quick. Mm. Okay, next one. So this is still November 20, 20, 2008, sorry. You are now entering. That view distance, man. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Okay. Loading, December 2008. Oftentimes, Koda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. <laughs> I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. Mm. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. <laughs> and I don't agree with that at all, but what are you gonna do? Mm. You, like, walk up the staircase as you walk towards it. Once uh. you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. You can hear so it. So why, yeah. if code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. You probably can make it up here without pressing enter, but I'm not gonna sit there for hours. Stand on an X starting at a bear for three hours. Staring at a bear for three hours. A game where you collect items, except the game automatically quits when you collect them all. You run a shop inside your own body, selling your organs strategically to make warm most money before and you die. nice and <laughs> filled with little ideas for games. You're the queen, dusting your Coda jewelry. would often tell me that he didn't <laughs> mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. You are he said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant you, and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. Game filled with chairs, except one chair is floating. <laughs> oh dear. You must address and rally... Oh, oh. <laughs> January 2009. Ready, set, fish. Has nothing to do with fishing. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Well, this, this is, is like new a for Coda. It's, it's an actual puzzle. Go game. ahead and see if you can solve it. I know how to solve this puzzle. It's very basic. Basically, you go in and you're like, "What the? How do you get through this door?" If you pay attention, when you pull this lever, the other door will actually open. I think. I think? But whatever, you, you gotta go like that. You pull the lever and then go through. Right? Oh, that's right. Yeah, there it is. Don't forget that solution, because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. We're gonna see it a lot. There's also this. <laughs> whatever. I've seen that already in another another location. There's actually a little square around it. Hmm. Interesting. And that's it. So that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve the puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. Hmm. All right, now I'm going to modify the game again so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Yeah, so you go, eh. <laughs> uh, I knew exactly what I was going to see when I pressed that, so I wasn't surprised. How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. Yeah. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game, since they essentially convey the opposite idea. Mm. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. Mm. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. Or even no. that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? Okay, I can't reduce... I was gonna, like, reduce the music volume a little bit so you could hear the voice. 
January 20... 2009. <laughs> I'm so used to saying 20 something. January 2009. You are now exiting. Aha! So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in, some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Hmm. March 2009. The Great and Lovely Descent. <laughs> I don't know why I like this one. Let's talk about video game development like for a second. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. Streetwise Fool. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Mm. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it Leave does that very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just mm. because he's working with what the engine does well. This is what Source is like. You try and make like a model, like something that's The tools a available detail. to the creator shape what Very kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You yeah. might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear boxy corridors. Yeah. Does anybody wants to say about that? Or well, actually, before we go down there, <laughs> what's outside? Yeah, so this is actually running on the Portal 2 branch of the Source engine. The same branch that uh, the Stanley Parable runs on. Yeah. You can actually tell because of the menu. <laughs> That's what's is quite interesting, is the menu tells you a lot about the game itself. It looks very different, but when you go into the likes of the options menu or the video settings, the this layout is almost identical. Identical setup, identical pieces to what is available in Portal 2. Very interesting. To me, at least. It's very interesting. Oh, you can actually get over here. I forgot you could do that. But yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello world of cubes. <laughs> I like the overworld. I like the weird white void thing that that you're standing in at the start. Um, go the, I'm gonna go the slow way down. Take one step at a time. Ooh. There we are. You can go down pretty much any way you want. I don't think there's any major dialogue that happens till the bottom. Yeah, it's very primitive, very basic. Just some cubes with developer textures on them. For some reason. Like below what is quite a detailed house to start with. So it was like a coffee shop, you know, a very detailed coffee shop. And then there's just this world, this weird void that's just full of very basic geometric shapes. Oh god, I fell. No! It's all good. <laughs> there's no death here. Yeah, and then there's another relatively speaking, detailed below section. Very strange. That was one of the gates. Oh, that was the front gate opening. <laughs> yeah, and so exactly what he was talking about, like the square shapes. Long, square corridors. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this is like prison. It's like a prison simulator down here. Oh, can't go that way. Oh, I can only go in. I see. Here we go. This prison, funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. <laughs> if you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. <laughs> this okay. is something that he well. and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable. Whether right. it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? Mm. And so I'm we just got into heated mindset. arguments over it. And there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games. 
that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. <laughs> Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. <laughs> yeah, so... It's, the story is very abstract at this point. It's very unclear as to where this is hitting. But it's very interesting in my opinion. I understand the argument that both people make in this when, when talking about playable games. I'm definitely of the... I'm of the mindset that games shouldn't intentionally annoy or intentionally frustrate players. I know that's a, it's a very sort of like basic like modern games should be playable, accessible, and all that, but I I have made stuff that's frustrating, intentionally frustrating, or annoying, aggravating to the to the to a player, and while that was fun for me back when I made those, uh, I came to realize that I didn't actually enjoy playing those games. While I enjoyed making them, I didn't enjoy playing them. So, yeah, I, I moved it's the to... Again. <laughs> with the exact same solution as I moved the last to trying time. to make things as fun and and as like as accessible and non-frustrating as possible. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise mm. I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Yeah, there's all sorts of ways you can read into all the games that Coda has made. But um ultimately there's something more interesting to read from all of this. Knowing the final, the outcome of the story changes the way you perceive the story as you play it. It's really fascinating. So, <laughs> if you haven't played this before, or if you have, hopefully this is still very interesting to you. Either way. You there. <laughs> Did you come Kuda from begins above? using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Right. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Yeah. You there, did you come up from up above? What was up there? Yes, it was a world stamped with whiteness. Yes, there was an enormous prison I spent hours in. Yes, there were these floating colored blocks. So yeah, it's I guess whatever you focus on in that case. Hmm. I don't know if there's any... If it really changes what happens if you choose different, you know, dialogue options. But I'm gonna say, yes, it was an enormous prison I spent hours in. <laughs> That's the world above. You've been there? Oh, you've been there. <laughs> Now this is important. Did you have to go through a puzzle with two doors and switches? Yes I did, that was literally the last thing I did before coming here. No, I don't remember having to go through any puzzle. I prefer not to tell you, after all, we've only just met. I'll say, yes I did! It was literally the last thing I did. Again, perfect. Now please, tell us how you solved it. I like that their head switches to speak to say that they're speaking. <laughs> tell us the solution. Tell us how to get to the other side. I, I don't remember how I solved it. I'm trying to remember, but I can't. I didn't solve it. Someone else let me in. Trust me, you don't want to go over there. <laughs> oh no, but I do. We do. We need to get there. Do you understand? It is the most important thing that in the world. It is the most important thing in the world. We have to escape this prison. There must be an ending. I promise you, there is... Oh, nothing I want more, I think he said. But then they don't ask any more questions. <laughs> So yeah, is this is this about the way that people approach a game? Hello, how did you get here? Was there a puzzle you had to pass through? <laughs> yes, do you want to know how to solve it? No, I've been right I've been right here this entire time. Yes, do you want to know how to solve it? No, no, we actually find the black space between the doors to be far more interesting. Have you seen it yet? Why would I care about the space between the doors? Actually, now that you mention it, I remember feeling strange as I passed through it. I don't recall a space between the doors. <laughs> Then how did you solve it? Actually, now that you remember it, I remember feeling strange as I passed through it. Don't think too hard about it. You'll see it again soon. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I like the way that... I love the abstract NPCs, if you will. <laughs> Where their heads tell you what they're thinking or what they're saying or what they're and doing. And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. You'll see, we see a lot more of, oh, that's right. This is like the motif, the biggest motif of the whole game. 
it's a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. Mm. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Yeah, no, I find, as I said before, knowing how the story goes, it's very fascinating to see it play out. April 2009. This game is connected to the internet. <laughs> as you walk around, you can leave notes. All notes you see are left by other players. Cool. Yeah, this is also quite an interesting thing. Nice room. Not. <laughs> yeah. No, these are these are just like. So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected yeah. to the internet. All of the notes that you're gonna see have been written by Coda. How do you? Beat this was this actually game? the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him no working on this, this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with this person. In retrospect, Whoa, I think shit. I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over-enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. You can't fall and off. And I cooled off wall. eventually. <laughs> yeah, this is actually quite interesting. I love the, the space. I love the design of the space, it's quite interesting to me. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> and each one has a little note. We can read every single one if we want. <laughs> Hello! I think there might be an achievement for that. I don't remember if this game well, has achievements. Feel free to skip over Reasonable. any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is gonna happen if you read all of them. I'm gonna just check if this game has achievements. It does not. <laughs> Never mind then. Either way, to me they can be a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with Everyone thoughts and feelings and hey. beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. Yeah, it's just divine fun. <laughs> I'm the but king of the world. Isn't it? That in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, <laughs> that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this Balls. idea is really seductive <laughs> to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. I could just mm. get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always liked Dakota's games so much, is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely, too. Hmm. Hey guys, just looking for someone to talk with. <laughs> oh dear. I refuse to believe. But ass butt. <laughs> I need to go to the freaking bathroom. Recognize me, please. There's nothing here, go back. Don't listen to that guy. <laughs> I love it. I love the little notes. A free t-shirt! Knowing it's just like one guy writing all this is quite funny. Need other side. Door, why you... Why you so... Wait. Why you so? Yeah. Door, how open? Makes game. Includes door. Cannot open door. Thanks. Open sesame. Ah, right. <laughs> A lot of people just like walk up to there and like give up. <laughs> Someday I'll meet the person who made this. New room! Okay, I'm not gonna read any more of them. I'm just gonna skip past them. <laughs> I love these spaces. Uh, they're very basic, like they've got a lot of very basic geometry, but I just love the abstractness and... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I like it so much. I've also got some modern art over there. <laughs> this is a bit like Dark Souls. 
this. <laughs> all the notes leaving. If you play online on Dark Souls, you'll see all this like all these notes strewn around everywhere. <laughs> Painting, what does it mean? Whoever made this has issues. <laughs> Who are all of you? Yeah. I, I do like that piece of art. It's very modern art, but it's still... I like it. I like the colours. Yeah, other than the notes, this is very blank kind of uh, game. Blank level. At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. Mm. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. Mm. All the whispering freaks me out. Developer, answer please. Shit, how do you solve it? This doesn't make sense, the second door won't open. Help! <laughs> Help! Oh my god, I've been here for literally an hour, what the frick do I do? Does this puzzle have a solution? <laughs> and because basic there's puzzle. this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces, mm. before you move on, you get to pause. Just, Just gonna read moment. these real quick. A few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. No solution. There's no second switch. Okay, just really quick. Are there any notes through here? There's one note. There's one little lone note over here. Second, I remember what's through here. How do you leave notes? <laughs> mm. The room full of typewriters. Are you there? Please say something. It could be anything. Just, I just need you to say something. Talk to me, please. Why are you having so much difficulty talking? Speak, please, 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 speak. <laughs> There's a lot of like metaphor you could read into that. Oh god. Okay, Porn this one stars is tough. Die too. It's gonna kind of just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. Okay. I seem to recall how this works. Uh It's like don't you just have to you have to go to some Oh, here we go. Yeah. There we go. Okay, it's not the one that I was thinking of. This goes on for a little bit. Don't remember how this first one goes. Um, that's right. There's like this. See, like this is it, the whole game, and there's nothing that's particularly yeah. interesting about it. You just walk to the end of a hallway. Except for some reason, Coda gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture. Yeah. And I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's going to start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay, yeah. cool. Here's version two. Yeah. But like, what furniture ought to go in the center of the room? <laughs> I'm going to answer silly. Put a giant hole in the ground. Ah, uh, so it doesn't matter what you answer. Okay, now what about the long wall of the room? Ten stoves lined up along the side. Let's put a picture, a huge picture of a horse. <laughs> I think we should light up this room a bit. We'll put live Tesla coils in each corner. Yeah. <laughs> and a table. You need a table. Who are you? What exactly are you doing this? Oh, where exactly are you doing this from? I'm pretty sure none of my choices are making any difference. Tables were invented in 1935. Uh, tables were invented in 1935. <laughs> Yeah, and then it just sort of like expands. This is the one I was thinking well, of. There's a bit more to this one, but still, it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness' sake. <laughs> this is, 
I think this is so, yeah, okay. Far, he far throws it out go. and starts over. This time he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. Hello, please walk forward. This guide will enable you to escape any prison environment. Follow the instructions carefully. Take care that you remember each step. First, click on this table. Good. Go over to the photo frame and click on... Uh, click it. Sorry, and click to turn it slightly. It's a table, and then it's picture frame. Is it this frame? There we go. Now turn the floor lamp in this room off, then turn it back on. So it's like, coffee table, picture frame, lamp, off and on. Now go to the left side, sofa, move it over a little. There we are. Finally, touch the shelves. That's it. In a real prison, the escape will now open. <laughs> Return to the star to be taken back to your prison. Yeah, this is weird. <laughs> Return. And of course, now the table is gone and you yeah. can't begin the chain of events to escape. Yeah. I remember that one Here's as well. Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well. And then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside and the outside is the inside. <laughs> Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen of them. Personally, I think it's awful to watch this. To see a person basically unraveling through their work. Uh, and for what? Like, at what point do you just go, eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on. <laughs> but Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop. That particular mechanism of defense against yourself. Without no, it, you just can't jump out. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going. And then he hits on something. And he likes it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. This is the very last version of the prison game that he created. And the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it. <laughs> okay. I don't remember this version. I'm just like in a small house, a small hedge maze, or <laughs> just hedges. That's right, and then there's this phone booth at the end here. That's right. Hello? Who is this? Hey, it's me. I'm you from after you escaped the prison. <laughs> You're me? <laughs> this is a very strange conversation. So you were trapped in this prison too? Yep, I was in the future. Oh, sorry, in the furniture maze. It's a yep, conversation. Was tutorial. And Reverse so prison. this is what Coda wants, is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, and to get some good advice from someone who knows. But the irony is that even in this scenario, you're still talking to yourself. Mm. You know, all of these games so far are Coda talking to himself. He was like being completely still and wildly in motion at the same time. <laughs> Do you feel any different? Sometimes I'm scared I'll get out and then things will be exactly the same as before. No, I'm really the same person now as I was back then. It actually does change. I don't feel like I'm the same person at all. Oh good! <laughs> That's so nice to hear! That makes me feel... really happy. Age just kind of does that, you know? It's still me, but I'm not somehow. It's hard to describe. Remember, remember to enjoy being who you are right now. It won't last. Wait, I'm gonna say this one. <laughs> it's gonna be nice. Wait, if you're me, then did you get a call from another person, another version of you when you were trapped? Uh, yes, I did get a call. That's how I escaped. <laughs> what did they tell you? What did you have to do to get out? All they told me was to be sincere. They asked me how I felt about being imprisoned. They just talked to me for a while. What? <laughs> that freed you? How does that work? Listen, you can't know until you're out, but I promise it works. Just talk to me. Aww. Okay, I can talk. Let's just talk for a bit. Will you be here? 
I'll be here for as long as you need. No. I can see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. Mm. After all of the obsession and frustration, just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay, wouldn't that be nice? Hmm. August 2009. So what would it look like? Okay. We're going to pick up from chapter 10 in the next episode. <laughs> so try and remember what we've done. We've just escaped or we've just ended the series of prison levels. Uh, things only escalate from here. I don't remember how many chapters there are, but I don't know if there's going to be sort of like one more episode, two more episodes or what the deal is, but yeah. I'm going to pick this up again very soon. <laughs> I love this game. I love this creator. I'm probably going to have to play Stanley Parable soon after this. <laughs> but whatever the case, if you like what you saw, hit like. If you want to see more from me, then subscribe. Luckily, you can just sort of like restart the level or, you know, you can just load from pretty much anywhere in the game. So, yeah, I should be able to pick up right on Chapter 10, House. August 2009. Thank you so much for watching and as always, 